Hello, my name is Christopher, and welcome back to the Know the Gospel channel. This is the program that endeavors to help fellow believers have a better understanding of biblical truth by exposing teachings that are not in line with the gospel and are contrary to God's word. Well, this is episode four, the last one of the Mount Rushmore of false teachers. There's only four people on that mountain, so we have four. I think we'll do a follow-up episode in the future. Uh, more on that later. Um, I've received a couple types of comments uh, on these videos. One is, well, yeah, why are you doing this? This is obvious. Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, they've been horrible teachers, false teachers for years. Everybody knows that. Why even waste your time? Don't even listen, obviously. Uh, a couple reasons to, that I do that. One is, yes, we've covered these men before, but I think it's really important to say it again. And for record, just reiterate these men are a problem and they're teaching doctrines that are other gospels, that are false teachings. I feel like I need to say that again in case you didn't catch earlier videos. I'm staking a claim on this. This is uh, the way that we need to view these men, mark and avoid them. The flip side of those types of comments that I got was people that were defending these men, still shockingly defending these false teachers, these wolves in sheep's clothing. And so the reason I'm doing this for those who are saying, why are you doing this? It's obvious is because I still have the comments and there are people all over the place uh, that are still supporting these people, still sending them money, still following them. We covered that hundreds of thousands of people uh, that are subscribed to these men's YouTube channel. Wait for the guy that we have today, though. So we need to do it because people are still being deceived by this. Um, they are clearly saying things that are unbiblical. Now, the, the other comment I got is, and I get on a, some of these videos, is how dare you judge these men? To be clear, God is the eternal judge. He is the one that is judging their souls. With that said, that doesn't mean that we aren't supposed to use discernment, that we aren't supposed to be Bereans, that we aren't supposed to compare what they are saying in the name of God to the Word of God to copy Chris Roseborough at Fighting for the Faith. That's his slogan. We must do that. In fact, Scripture after Scripture after Scripture calls us to compare what these men are saying to what we read in our Bibles, to the written Word of God. And so, although we are not judging their eternal souls, we can see their fruit, and the, the fruit tells you a little bit about the tree. And that is also biblical. That's how we can tell false teachers by their fruit. And so we are called to do this. Those who are saying, please don't judge. You're not supposed to do this. How dare you do this? That is untrue. The Bible calls us to do that, and I encourage you to do the same. Before we get to the person today, I think it's worthwhile to start with some scripture 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. This is Paul um, instructing Timothy. It says this, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead. There it is. God is going to judge these men. He is the final, ultimate, the only judge. Acknowledge that is true. And by his appearing in his kingdom, but the kingdom preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. That is today. It's been going on for a long time. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. People are turning away from truth, wandering off into myths, every day. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of the evangelist, fulfill your ministry. This is Paul's charge to Timothy, and it's his charge to us as well. Yes, God is judging. We are supposed to preach the word, and what are we doing? We're instructing people with the word of God. We need to be watching out, Paul's saying, for these people who are wandering off into myths, people that are not enduring sound doctrine, that's what we're going to focus on today. This person just doesn't hold true to sound doctrine and he scratches itching ears. That is what we're going to cover today. The man today is none other than Joel Osteen. He is the one of the biggest wolves in sheep's clothing out there. Um, we've covered him before. He, uh, in episode 32, we talked about his Easter sermon. That was just bad. His point 
he talked about the resurrection briefly and then his point was to say that because of that we can resurrect all sorts of things in our life the things that aren't going well the things and he turned it into his normal pep talk thing he turned straight away from the glory and the wonder uh, and the criticalness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to something and made Easter all about you. That's what Joel Osteen likes to do. Make scripture about you. He, um, he let's, let's pull up his page here and see, you know, we talked about the hundreds and thousands of subscribers uh, on the other guys, 3.4 million subscribers. Take a look at some of these titles. Don't be defined by your mistakes from double to trouble feed your faith dealing with difficult people the power of blessing these aren't biblical titles these are self-help videos these these don't result in good exposition they don't result in good bible teaching they don't result in him digging into a passage of scripture he's going to take a verse and then he's going to give you what you want to hear. He's going to scratch your itching ears. That is his ministry. He, and he's going to say it in the videos that we have pulled up here in a second. Uh, he, he's, he wants you to feel good. He wants you to leave feeling great about yourself. He doesn't like to talk about sin. He doesn't like to talk about depravity. He doesn't like to talk about how we're separated from God. The sin nature. He doesn't like to talk. He doesn't want you to walk out feeling bummed. And yet, if you would talk about sin, you don't leave the congregation on that you then talk about the right uh the righteousness of christ who then covers over sin uh he just doesn't preach the gospel properly not deep preaching milk not solid food would be a great way to describe this what we're going to do is listen to him he's not prepared for some of these questions um he doesn't preach the word he wanders off and doesn't say strong to doctrine and then we're going to listen to some we're going to listen to John MacArthur have some brutal critique on Joel Osteen's ministry at the end of this. Let's just listen to this. Uh, some of these video clips that I pulled together, some of these are old. They're just uh, examples of a long-held ministry of bad teaching. Phoenix, Arizona, hello. Hello, Larry. You're the best. And thank you. This is definitely an old clip with, with uh, Larry King. Listen to the question from the call. Thank you, Joel, Joel, for your positive messages and your book. I'm wondering, though, um, why you sidestep Larry's earlier question about how we get to heaven. Um, the Bible clearly tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and the only way to the Father is through him. That's not really a message of condemnation, but of truth. Yeah, I would agree with her. I believe so that. So that Jew is not going to heaven? No. I, I... No, wait a minute. He said, I would agree with her, and then Larry King, who's a Jew, said, so Jew's not going to heaven, and then Joe Olstein said, no, let me just back that up real quick the only way to the Father is through him. That's not really a message of condemnation, but of truth. Yeah, I would agree with her. I believe so that. So that's Jew is not going to hell. No, I, I, I mean, can't. Well, no, here's my thing, Larry, is I can't judge somebody's heart, you know. I don't know. Only God can look at somebody's heart. And so, I don't know. I just, to me, it's not my business to say, you know, this one is or this one isn't. I'm just saying, here's what the Bible teaches, and I want to put my... That's a cop-out. Obviously, God is going to judge people, but that's a cop-out answer. The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. That is scripture, and he should stand unwaveringly on that sound doctrine, but he doesn't. He gets out of the difficult situation or tries to. He gets out of the limelight. He doesn't want to address those things. He wants everybody to feel comfortable, everybody to come to his church to feel loved, and then he just abandons the gospel message completely. My faith in, uh, you know, in Christ, and I, I just, I think it's wrong when we go around saying, you know, you're not going, you're not going, you're not going, because it's not exactly my way. I'm just, I'm not going to believe your way. I believe my way. I believe my way with all my heart. But, For someone who doesn't share it. Well, is wrong, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I mean. well, I don't know if I look at it like that. I... That's the way we look at it. Unfortunately, Jesus is the only way. Joel cannot say that. By the way, I'm, we're this is 1.5 speed, so it's a little bit quicker just to get through. Which, I would present my way, but I'm just going to let God be the judge of that. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. So you make no He doesn't know. Wow. Judgment on anyone. No, but about I about atheists. No, I just, you know what, I let, I let somebody, let, I'm going to let God be the judge of who goes to heaven and hell. And I just, again, I present the truth. And I say it every week, you know, I believe it's a relationship with Jesus. But, you know what, I'm not going to go around telling everybody else if, if they don't want to believe that, that's going to be their choice. God's got to look at your own heart. God's got to look at your heart. And only God knows that. Wow. Hey, message of the gospel. Glad to have you. He's associated with people like Oprah, Oprah who has no sound understanding of Christianity. Yeah, we pray for you. Okay, so here's the big question. Are there many paths to get to the... 
This is from somebody else's video with the music over top of it. She's asking, are there multiple paths to heaven? One God. Well, I believe, Oprah, that there, I believe that Jesus is the way to the one God. But I believe there are many paths to Jesus. What he said was, I believe Jesus is the one path to God, but there are many paths to Jesus. Again, that's a cop-out. Also not biblical. There are Muslims that can find a way to Jesus so they can find the way to God. What is he trying to say? He's getting out of, again, stating the, the Christian doctrine. I don't know, really, because um, we feel people approach us just like they knew it. This is his wife. It's a little bit annoying. We'll skip a little bit here. You know, so we... Uh, it does come up in, in interviews and things, but it would be. But, Mark, I, I don't finish like gay marriage. People... Okay, so interview in Huffington Post, bringing up tough topics like gay marriage. Look to the ministers for, for, sure. for, uh, for leadership. Sure. Is that an issue that's for you against the rules? Um, you know, it, it would be, but, Mark, I don't, you know, I don't really focus on a lot of those things. I try to stay in my lane of what I feel called to do. Mm -hmm. that, that... So he answers right that gay marriage would be wrong according to Scripture, but he doesn't want to focus on that which that's fine, they get answer these questions, gotcha questions, and there's another video from The View where they're just asking him gotcha questions. Uh, and then, the, so so he, he does an okay job there, but then listen to what he says his ministry is, and it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ, nothing to do with the gospel message. Listen to this. It does come up in, in interviews and things, but just don't feel like that. That's not my core message. My core message is how do you how do you have a healthy self-image? How do you let go of the past? How do you raise good children? How do you reach your dreams? Now, None of that was the gospel message. That's another gospel. It's self-help. It's pep talk. Listen to listen to what he said his message was about. Did he say Jesus? I don't feel like that. That's not my core message. My core message is how do you how do you have a healthy self-image? How do you let go of the past? How do you raise good children? How do you reach your dreams? Now I know that is part of it. Yeah, because you have forty-five thousand people. Yeah. some of them are gay. It, it, oh yeah. For example, it, 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 yeah. absolutely, and everybody's welcome. But my, my take on it is. You know, it's easy to make one issue to become known for that or to, or to let it sidetrack your message. And, you know, if you look at our congregation or the people that come to Yankee Stadium, including myself, we all have issues. Everybody's on a journey. So I try to say, here's, here's my focus, here's my lane. You know, and that's, that's kind of where I've, I've stayed in it. It's not a great message, Joel Osteen. Not preaching the word. Some of the criticism is that you're preaching prosperity. I was reading some of the critics, and I was thinking, well, why would, you, why would anybody criticize you for preaching prosperity? Because... I love one of the richest people in the world. Why do, you, why do you criticize prosperity, huh? What kind of God wants you to be poor and miserable? <laughs> That's the way I feel as well. I mean, I don't know what who would say, you know, that you're not supposed to, you know, leave your children better than you were before. And plus, Oprah. That's not what we're talking about. Prosperity gospel is completely different, Joel. Prospering, it's not just, you know, material things. It's, it's peace in your mind and health in your body and things like that. And so there's, a, you know, a belief that you're supposed to suffer more and be poor and to show your humility. I just, I don't see the Bible that way. I see that God came to, you know, Jesus died that we might live an abundant life. and. That is a verse out of context, that we might have an abundant life. That doesn't mean health and wealth, Joel. That is, that's bad teaching right there. That's false teaching. To be a blessing to others. I can't be a big blessing to people if I'm poor and broken. False. Paul, Peter, Jesus, poor, broke, the biggest blessings on earth of all time, wrong. I don't feel good about myself. If you're poor, broke, and depressed, is that because you're not praying enough or you're not? Of course, it's trying right. to hold us off. Orthodox, strict. Bit. They focus on what God's called me to do. Again, he wants to focus on what God's called him to do, which apparently isn't preaching scripture. A few weeks ago, there was an event here. All right, this is John MacArthur's brutal assessment of the teachings of Joel Osteen. Listen to what he's saying. Uh, Dodger Stadium with Joel Osteen. 35,000 people at Dodger Stadium, something like that. Um, he is now the largest quote-unquote church, uh, I'm using the word loosely, in America, down in Houston. Um, you need to understand that he is a pagan religionist in every sense. Wow. He's a quasi-pantheist. Jesus is a footnote that satisfies his critics and deceives his followers. Wow. The idea of his whole thing is that men have the power in themselves to change their lives. In his definitive book, Your Best Life Now, he says, and that ought to be a dead giveaway since the only way this could be your best life is if you're going to hell. That's true. That's harsh, but that is true. He says that anyone can create by faith and words the dreams he desires. That's word of faith movement. That's name it and claim it. That is not biblical. It's a huge false teaching in the church today. It's going on for a while. This isn't a new video by John MacArthur. Health, wealth, happiness, success. The list is always the same. Here's some quotes from his book, Your Best Life Now. If you develop an image of success, health, abundance, joy, peace, happiness, nothing on earth will be able to hold those things from you. 
End quote. See, that's, that's the law of attraction that's a part of this kind law of system. Of Here's another quote. All of us are born for earthly greatness. You were born to win. Win what? <laughs> God wants you to live in abundance. You were born to be a champion. That's all Joel Osteen's pep talk preaching, self-help, not teaching the Word. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. Before we were formed, He prepared us to live abundant lives, to be happy, healthy, and whole. But when our thinking becomes contaminated, it's no longer in line with God's Word. End quote. By the way, God's Word is not the Bible. God's Word is that Word that comes to us mystically, spiritually, that tells us what we should want. That is so true. There's a longer video there, but we won't go into it anymore. John MacArthur is not just saying that without backup and proof. Video after video of Joel Osteen teaching for decades has shown this, and frankly, his father did it as well. And this is a long history of false teaching. He belongs, he's been on our no-go list, and now we are going to put him on the Mount Rushmore of false teachers as well. So there's the four that we have. That was hard to pick four. There are so many options. There are so many options and so many great suggestions in the comments section of these videos. We'll probably revisit this in the near future, maybe some dishonorable mentions because there are people that are in those hundreds of thousands and millions of influencers, uh, subscribers, and uh, those that are influencing using music, you know who I'm talking about, that are really dragging people into some false teaching as well. This is important. We need to call out false teachers. We need to mark and avoid them. We need to stand up for truth because there are people that will still support people like Joel Osteen, Jesse Duplantis, Kenneth Copeland, and Benny Hinn, and others, and they're being led astray, not being um, solely reliant on the Word of God, but listening to this extra biblical, additional, anecdotal, inspirational speeches that are leading people to stray and in some ways leading people to hell because they are not actually teaching the true gospel message. That is the worst part of it. And we need to uh, mark and avoid this because they often teach other gospels. I'm going to leave it at that for this episode Remember, preach the word in season and out. Stand strong through every wind and wave of teaching. Please like, subscribe, share. Till next time, may your life be governed by the gospel, the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ each and every day. Amen.